I've always considered myself pretty good with being able to save money. When I was in my teens into my early 20s, I was able to save $30,000 working at a part-time job. I used that money to be able to pay for my university, pay for my rent while I was going to school, and I graduated with zero debt. When I graduated, I was able to land my first full-time salary job where I worked for three years and saved up over $100,000. I used that money to be able to put on a down payment in the house that I'm in now. And ever since then, I've just been able to continue to save a lot of money and invest it. So in this video, I wanna share with you seven things that I do on a daily basis in order to save all of this money. Starting off with number one is something that I just really don't like to share with a lot of people, but since you are watching and a loyal viewer, I'm gonna share it with you. So thank you for the thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. So the first thing is that I do cut my own hair. My dad has been cutting my hair ever since I was a kid and when I became a teenager I was able to cut my hair on my own. I cut my hair once every two weeks and I imagine that if I were to get my hair cut at a barber it would cost anywhere from like $25 to about 30 bucks so I imagine that I'm saving about 50 to 60 dollars every single month. The reason why I don't like to tell people that I cut my own hair is because I feel like they're looking at it closer and they're scrutinizing it so if I ever made a mistake they would know and so that's why I don't like telling people that I cut my own hair but it's definitely a great method to save a lot of money. Moving on to reason number two on how I'm able to save money is something that you probably heard many times before and this is avoiding eating out as much as possible and cooking for yourself. I cook for myself for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. For breakfast it's all very simple stuff it's just eggs and toast or oatmeal and protein for lunch. I cook for myself every Sunday do a large batch meal prep and I eat it from Monday through Friday and so I don't have to worry about going out to eat what I'm going to eat eating unhealthy foods and I save about that 10 to 15 dollars every single day. For dinner I keep it very simple just a protein a vegetable and sometimes even a carb. Keep your meal simple is the key to being able to cook for yourself every single day. Avoid making these grand 10 plus ingredient recipes that takes hours to cook in the kitchen that is not sustainable sustainable and you're definitely not going to want to do that after those long hard days of work. We tend to go to Costco, we buy our proteins and our vegetables in bulk, saving even more money as well as reducing the amount of times we need to go to the grocery store. When my girlfriend and I go out to eat for dinner, our bill is usually around 40 to 60 dollars depending on where we go and that's just that one meal. For 40 to 60 dollars if we were to buy food at the grocery store and make it ourselves, that food will last us typically typically about four days for lunch and dinner. So we're able to make that money last so much further and so much longer in comparison to if we were to go out to eat. And over time, that money could really add up to a small fortune. And number three on how I'm able to save a lot of money is that I continue to choose to drive my used hand-me-down car that's 100% paid off. I love cars, I've always been into cars, and I've been capable of buying a new luxury car. However, I've always chosen not to buy one just because I have my car that works, it's reliable and it's functional. And so it's kind of a trap and a waste of money is how I see it when you go out and you buy a luxury car, especially if you're picking up a loan, you're paying the interest rate, you're paying the higher insurance rate, and you're just having that monthly payment that you have to deal with. If you have a reliable car that is 100% paid off, that is things that you really just don't need to worry about. And that's a lot of money saved. It could be up to hundreds of dollars every single month. And of course, over the course of a loan, which is typically anywhere from five to seven years, of a car loan, that could really add up to quite a lot of money and I think for what? For mainly just to look cooler, to have a nicer driving experience, to flex a little bit and have a nicer car, but really at the end of the day, it's just a lifestyle creep that I see that it's not something that I'm willing to spend my money on at the moment. One day I'll spend my money on a nice luxury car, but for now, I'd rather invest it and get to my goals quicker. Moving on to number four is that now with the house, we're able to have enough space 
space to build out a small home gym. This home gym obviously doesn't have everything that a regular gym has. However, it's quite enough for my girlfriend and I and something that we use on a daily basis. 24 hour fitness is actually just a couple blocks away from my house. And if we didn't have this home gym, we probably would be signing up for a membership at 24 hour fitness. We looked it up and it's about $35 per month for each person. So that's about $70 that we're saving every single month by having this home gym. Moving on to number five on saving money is really just to avoid smoking or drinking or doing any kind of drug on a regular basis. Not to say I've never done anything in my past before, but what I've learned from it all is really just a constant feeling that you're constantly trying to chase over and over again. Of course, we all know that every high is just temporary and it's going to go away and you have to spend more money in order to get that high again. And so the issue is just this constant spending of money, this constant expense that really never goes away unless one day you choose to be like, I don't need it anymore. And once you don't need it anymore, the expense goes away and that's a lot of money that you can save. Moving on to number six, and thank you so much if you're still here. I really appreciate it, guys. You guys are the best. Thank you for the thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. All right, so number six is going to be I'm very intentional with some of the new hobbies and interests that I begin to get into. As you guys all know that if once you start a new hobby, it can start getting expensive very fast by just buying all the equipment it takes in order to get into it. So for example, I started getting into making videos, so then I need a new camera and lenses and lighting and computer setup and audio equipment, it starts to add up very quickly. So what I usually like to do is when I first start a new hobby, I try to make sure that one, it's obviously something that I enjoy doing, but also at the same time, I can see some light at the end of the tunnel to where some of my money that I start investing into this hobby will be a return in the future. So there's a little bit of an ROI as far as some of the hobbies that I begin to get into. I think this is a good way to approach it instead of trying to pick up a hobby where you enjoy doing it, but but then at the same time, you're never going to really make any money from it. And so with this YouTube channel, you know, I enjoy making videos. And so hopefully one day I can start monetizing the channel and making money off of it. So thank you so much for watching. And last to close it out, number seven is that I'm really close to my family. So we all share a lot of accounts together to spread out the cost, things such as a phone bill or car insurance under the same account, some subscriptions that we all share, such as YouTube premium or Netflix. So we all spread spread out this money. We're all not just having our own individual accounts where it's going to cost a lot more. I know that this is not for everybody. Not everybody can do this with their families, but if it's possible, then this is a great way to save a lot of money. All right, guys, there's also other things that I wanted to throw in here. This is also like an eight or nine list, but I reduced it down to seven. But some of the other things were generally like, I just try not to go to Target or go have an Amazon Prime account and just buy things I don't really need. But I think you guys already know know that by this point, but in order to save a lot of money, just try your best not to buy all these little knickknacks and things that you think you need, but at the end of the day, you don't really need them. Okay guys, but that's about it for the video. If you learned something, definitely go ahead and hit that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. My name is Jimmy Invest and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.